Today on Monkey Life, Jeremy's on a mission to coax overweight O'Sheen into the great outdoors. Go on, should we go for a walk? There's trouble when Stumpy Jonathan meets the girls. <laughs> and baby Mikado goes out into the big wide world for the first time. It's just going to be so nice now he's going to get out and he's going to develop faster than ever. Monkey World in Dorset is the largest sanctuary of its kind on the planet. Dr. Alison Cronin and her team dedicate their lives to rescuing and rehabilitating primates from all over the world. Yeah, everybody's brilliant. Really good. It's been several months since overweight orangutan O'Sheen arrived from South Africa. She hasn't had an easy time at the park so far, finding it difficult to make friends. The 13-year-old grew up with humans, so doesn't know how to interact with other orangs. O'Sheen cannot share, she cannot give, she's got nothing to bring to the party. She really hasn't. You know, she clearly doesn't see any point in orangs whatsoever, and what are they doing sharing this space with me? Until now, O'Sheen has been kept inside. But today, Jeremy has decided it's time to coax her out. If you can lock me right in all the locks. Yeah, we're going to let O'Sheen out for the first time into an outside enclosure. Because she's so obstinate, we've kept her inside to get some sort of control, if you like, happening with her. So, you know, she realises that, you know, she has to do certain things she might not want to. Well, I, hopefully we're there now. So we're going to let her into the outside enclosure and um, see what happens. I don't know. It's a lottery, isn't it? <laughs> to get to the outside area, O'Sheen will have to navigate a series of tunnels. But she doesn't seem keen. It looks like Jeremy will have to go in to guide her through. If I could stick my head in there, that might just get her curious. The other orangs have no problems with the tunnels, but O'Sheen isn't used to them, and her size makes it more difficult for her. O'Sheen! But eventually, curiosity gets the better of her. Good girl. Come on. This is where I get stuck trying to negotiate this corner. Oh. Come on, Puddin. Come on. Here we go. Here you go. What we got here? Is that worth a little bit of a flapjack? I'm thinking possibly so. Jeremy has worked hard at building a relationship with O'Sheen over the last few months, so that she trusts him. Come on, should we go for a walk? Come on, come on, let's go for a walk. He wants to familiarise her with the enclosure, so that she feels comfortable enough to come out on her own. O'Sheen has never had much exercise, but her recent weight loss has made her surprisingly nimble on the climbing frame. She certainly came out a lot quicker than I thought she would, but, yeah, she's happy. She's just checking everything out. She's probably got the best view of the park that there is. From her vantage point, O'Sheen can see other residents at the park. She's surveying everybody, mainly her neighbours here, which is Gordon's group this morning, and they're sort of taking a bit of an exception to her. Gordon's checking out the new silhouette um, of the new lady and realising I think he's going to have his hands full if he were ever to meet her. O'Sheen doesn't seem too keen on him either, but it's Xiao Lan who's most indignant at the new landmark. We've got Xiao Lan out there all puffed up and displaying. Xiao Lan's not impressed that there's another woman around and shows her disapproval of O'Sheen by blowing raspberries. Alison and Jeremy decide it's time to let Linga and Dinda join O'Sheen. Yeah, um, Cara and Penny, if you guys are happy, we could try letting the little guys out. 
Oshin doesn't let the young orangs out of her sight as they make their way cautiously around the enclosure. Last time they met, she was rather aggressive towards them and made sure they knew who was boss. You're not having that. You're not having it. Linga is more interested in Jeremy's bucket than she is in Oshin. Not bad. Can I help you? <laughs> Can I help you? As long as they don't get in her way, Oshin seems happy enough for Linga and Dinda to be there. This is big progress. We've just gone great guns this morning, actually. It's a big change from her life in South Africa, and she's taken everything in her stride. She's settled into the new house really well. She's graduated every hurdle we've given her so far with flying colors. We're really pleased. If you want to feed that through, and then I'll go around the other side and pick, pull it through. Another new arrival being allowed outside for the first time is baby Golden Cheeks Gibbon, Mikado. Primate care staff members Mike and Jill are adding new hoses and toys to the enclosure. We're putting up some new bits of rope and climbing frame for him so that it's easy for him to get in and out. Hello, Alex. <laughs> There's Alex come to say hi. Hey, Mikado. Mikado was brought over from a zoo in France after his mother died. Mike hand-reared him until he was old enough to join his new foster mom, Alex. The relationship between Alex and Mikado is getting on really well. They are interacting much, much more now. He's sort of getting to the point where he's that irritating little thing that keeps flying around the enclosure. He sort of just flips her hair um, or her hand or, or, or her tummy, um, and she just tolerates it. She's quite happy about it. Mike is hoping the new toys will entice the little gibbon outside. You better like it and love it. But it's Alex who comes out first. Good girl, Alex. Are you waiting for your little boyfriend? Is he coming out as well, Alex? Come, on, Ricardo. Good boy. Hello, little one. What? There's a brave little gibbon. Yeah, what do you reckon to that? Good girl, Alex. It doesn't take Mikado long to start exploring his new playground. Whether Alex would be really happy about this, because uh, if you like these outside enclosures for her as a bolt hole to get away from him, now he's going to be following her all over the place. So uh, she's going to be a lot fitter, I can see. In the wild, gibbons spend all day in the trees. Good boy. Yes, it's OK, I'm still here. This enclosure has lots of branches and foliage to help Mikado strengthen his arms and improve his coordination. It's just going to be so nice now he's going to get out. He's obviously got all the trees to explore, um, and he's going to develop faster than ever. Over at the Stumpy House, the male ugly monkeys are about to have a rude awakening. Alison and the team are going to put them in with the girls. The game plan this morning, anyway, is grab them, box them up, take them down, and just bung them in. And we'll act like it's no big deal, and hopefully the macaques will think so, too. The five male macaques have been at the park since 2000, and in recent years have been starved of female company. The team decide to introduce them to the girls gradually, starting with Jonathan and Sam. Look at him. Yeah. Kelly's straight in there. The nine girls came to Monkey World after being retired from a medical research facility in Scotland. Oh my word! Oh look at that! Kelly, Maureen, and Cola three of the more confident females waste no time in introducing themselves to Jonathan. Oh, Jonathan, you're going to be very popular man. And Sam seems to be a big hit with low-ranking Charlie. Oh, wouldn't that be nice? Oh, big oh. hug. The boys can't believe their luck. 
In the wild, stump-tailed macaques live in large mixed groups, so putting males with females is perfectly normal. But rehabilitating institutionalized animals can be very difficult, and introductions have to be carefully supervised. Jonathan's getting to know Sylvie, but Cola decides to put a stop to that and climbs down to introduce herself. That's Sylvie told. The boys seem to be settling in. They are really enjoying having females. They've sort of been living in a bachelor group for sort of 10 years, but they seem to know what to do. As Jonathan and Cola get better acquainted, Sam turns his attentions to Sylvie. Sam is higher ranking than Jonathan, and the girls are just working this out. Jonathan sort of is sort of stomping around a bit more. Um, a lot of the females seem a bit more wary of Jonathan, whereas Sam sort of is proving a bit of a ladies' man, really. They all seem to quite like Sam. Suddenly, Jonathan starts pushing his luck with Miriam and becomes quite aggressive. She's had enough. But he doesn't take the rejection well. It's OK, Jonathan. They're just such violent so and so. The team decides that Jonathan needs to cool off, so separate him from the others. We just have to make sure that everything that we're doing here doesn't jeopardize the welfare of anybody else. Do all five boys make it into this group so that we have one super group of uglies? We'll wait and see, but we'll let the ladies and their welfare dictate that. It's an early start for Jeremy at the chimp nursery. Good morning. Hello, Sal. What's happening? Every morning, he gives Sally, Lulu and the youngsters any medication and dietary supplements they might need. Sally. Hello. Sal. Come on, Sal. Sally is getting one to help ease stiffness in her joints. You go stiff on me. Is your pro soluble? One for you. It's like yoghurt, it's a probiotic. Keep you all regular. Hello, Ash. Brian! Come on, Brian. Rodders, Ash and Brian are very cooperative, but Lulu is having none of it. Lulu, are you coming over? Come on, darling. Lulu. Have it your way. You usually do. This morning, Jeremy's giving them a special treat. Smoothies. What are we having today, huh? <laughs> And Brian can hardly contain himself. Hey, 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 stop it. Here you go. That's for you. Here you go, Sal. Jeremy wouldn't normally go in a chimp enclosure, but he's known the youngsters all their lives and has worked with Sally for many years. There you go. However, one chimp is still refusing to take her medicine. Lulu! Hello, Lulu! Hello, are you coming? You're not, are you? No, you're not playing. OK, is that good? Is that good? All the female chimps at the park are on birth control, so Jeremy needs to get Lulu to take her pill. Lulu, come on. Come on, Lulu. There's your pill and your pro-soluble. Lulu, you are very, very, very special. Come here. <clears throat> At last. Although young Rodgers thinks he's in for second helpings. Good girl. Fourteen-year-old Trudy has had a variety of health problems, and the veterinary team have been baffled as to the cause. Trudy, from the day she arrived here, has always come with a whole package full of issues. Her skin had gone very sort of scabby. She had a lot of hair loss. She had constant diarrhea and a really swollen, extended belly. 
individual little complaints, but when you look at her as a, the whole package, it wasn't right and it wasn't good. The team tried all sorts of ways to improve her condition. We got to the point where she was on two or three different supplements. Her diet had been radically changed to exclude wheat and different things. She was on a couple of medications for the diarrhea. And actually, at one point, we even had her onto steroids to see if we could, whatever her body was reacting to, we could calm down. None of it worked. So Alison called a meeting to discuss Trudy's situation. I made a simple request of the vets at that point in time, can we simply end it? Just dial it back to zero again. So diet goes back to normal. All other supplements and everything out. And let's just see what happens to Trudy. And we had gotten so far away from the goal of getting her fit, healthy and normal that it was just time to try something completely different. And it worked. Trudy is now giving as good as she gets. She's throwing mud at Simon because he's upset her. Boss Hananya comes over to make sure things don't get out of hand. And high-ranking female Cherry tries to calm her down. Everyone in the group is protective of Trudy. She persuades Hanania to sort Simon out for her, which he does. Trudy's hair has started coming back. Her belly's still a little bit bloated, but not so bad. She's eating the full diet again, along with the rest of Hanania's group. And she has a little happy look on her face. I've seen her turning pirouettes and telling people off. Simon tries to make peace with Trudy but the little chimp doesn't give in easily. Lots of different individuals want her attention because, you know, if you associate with the people in charge, the people who have the power, a little bit of that rubs off on you. And she's hanging out with the people who are at the top of the heap. So, you know, Hananya quite likes her. Peggy and Cherry are the dominant females. And then the up and coming females even, such as Johnny, and everybody's interested in hanging out with Trudy. So I think in everybody's mind in here, it's Queen Trudy, and um, quite frankly, I think she likes it that way. At the Stumpy House, the team are about to put all the boys in with the girls. They're hoping things will go more smoothly this time. Phil, Paddy and David are joining Sam, who's already settled in. And Jonathan is being given a second chance. Jeremy's come armed with a carbon dioxide fire extinguisher, just in case things get rough again. A couple of last minute checks and the team are happy to let everyone mingle. David, one of the dominant males, is first out. He's doing the dominant thing. Oh, Phil, don't run. <laughs> Patty, look at that. Okay, so the ladies are being nice to him now. Kelly pops over to say hello to David. <laughs> David's pushing people but not doing anything to them, so it's a lot of screaming really about nothing. Sam steps in to keep the peace. Any form of communication with them generally starts with a really hard push or a shove or a grab. You know, it's no politeness. Sylvie, meanwhile, is winding up new boy Paddy. Sylvie, hey, I have our journey. There's a lot of shoving and pushing and some of the lower ranking individuals are being pushed around and, and displaced. So even if they're not being attacked, they're just being moved on constantly. My main concerns right now are for our lowest ranking male, Phil, who's 
getting shoved around not only by the ladies, but also by the boys who he's always been with. And it's Jonathan once again who's in the thick of it. Jonathan, no! No! Don't do that! Let's get Jonathan out. Ideally in this bedroom, Jeremy. I don't see him stopping. No. No. So Jonathan's in the doghouse again. And with him out of the way, the others are able to get on with making friends. David with a much calmer Sylvie. And Sam with, well, quite a few of the girls. It will be very interesting to see. Does the beauty and sort of um, calmness of Sam pay off? Does David's sort of stature and history and dominant position as it stands now pay off? Or does Jonathan's aggression and full-on behavior pay off? And, you know, speaking for myself, I would go for the handsome, quiet one who's gentle, and that would be Sam. But our ladies, uh, you know, have their own minds in there, and we'll see who they choose. Next time on Monkey Life. The team travel to the Middle East to rescue a very lonely chimp. Getting her into the transport box has to go smoothly. But Jeremy has to resort to drastic measures to get her out of her cage. 